traditional maths, freestanding maths qualification. Um, and today we'll be looking at rationalizing denominators. Okay. So that's when you have a fraction where the denominator has some form of surd in it. So it's an irrational denominator and you want to rationalize it. Okay. Remember that the book that we will be looking at throughout this course is this level three freestanding maths qualification, additional maths book by OCR. Okay. Um, and the first example I'm going to go through is an example where the denominator is not just irrational, but it has rational and irrational parts. It, it's it's more complicated than just a third. Okay. The question I have is if you have seven over two plus root three. Okay. And it asked you in the question to rationalize the denominator. At GCC level, you might be asked to rationalize the denominator where you have questions like this, uh, five over root three. Okay. And that's relatively simple because you know that if you multiply root three by root three, then the third will no longer be a third. So if you multiply the top and bottom of that by root three, then you have rationalized the denominator. You will get five root three over three because root three times root three is three. And now you have rationalized the denominator. That's at GCC level. At additional maths level, you are going to get more complicated fractions. Okay. This one, if we multiply the top and bottom by root 3, which is a very common error, this is what we would get. The top, if you multiply 7 by root 3, you would get 7 lots of root 3. So that's 7 root 3. However, if you multiply the denominator by root 3, you have two parts of this denominator. If you multiply the entire denominator by root 3, you will get two lots of root 3, because the 2 has to be multiplied by root 3. And then you would get root three multiplied by root three, which would be three. That is not simpler than it used to be. You have not rationalized it. You've in fact made the entire fraction more complicated and less simple. Okay, so that's not the way to go. So you've got to think again. You need to multiply the top and bottom by something so that the denominator becomes a rational value. And to do this, you need to know the following skill. The key skill is knowing that a plus b, if you multiply it by a minus b, okay, you will get a squared, a times the a is a squared. You will also get b times a, which is a b. You'll also get minus b times a, which is minus a b. So those two will cancel each other out. And you'll get minus b times b, which is minus b squared. This is key. Because if you had something where you had a and a b, and one of them was irrational, if you multiply it, if one of them was a third, was a square root, if you multiply it by the same thing, but with the opposite sign in between, then you're going to get a result where both of these values a and b are squared and if you square um, a rational value it'll still be rational if you square a square root it'll become rational okay so this is called the difference of two squares a squared minus b squared is the difference of two squares and a plus b lots of a minus b is the is the factorized form of that and we're going to use that to help us so all we need to do now is multiply the top and bottom by the same as the denominator, except for the opposite sign in between. So two minus root three. So seven over two plus root three multiplied by two minus root three over two minus root three. Now, if you make mistakes when you're multiplying out multiple terms together, I would really suggest using a grid to multiply. 
seven lots of two minus root three, you should be able to do without a grid. You're doing seven times two, which is 14. Seven times negative root three, which is negative seven lots of root three. And underneath, if you do two plus root three times two minus root three, if you're scared about it for any reason, until you are fluent and can do it faster, I would suggest using a grid. A grid is a really nice visual way of multiplying out polynomials. Okay, multiplying out polynomials, multiplying out any sort of bracket with anything inside it. Um, so here, two times two is four. Two times negative root three is negative two lots of root three. Two lots of root three is two root three. And notice that these two will always, if you've done it right, will always cancel each other out. Two root three added to negative two root three is zero. And then you've got negative root three times root three, which is negative three. So the denominator becomes four minus three, which is one. So your answer will be 14 minus seven root three over one. That there is the fraction with a rational denominator but you should leave it in its simplest form. And if you divide by one, it's the same as what it was. So it's 14 minus seven root three is your solution. So that there is the simplified form of seven over two plus root three. It is equivalent to it. Okay, so the key here is if you get a denominator, which is a plus root b, and multiply it by a minus root b, or vice versa. If you get a minus root b, multiply it by a plus root b, okay? And that will rationalize the value. Okay, it's time for your turn. I'll give you the question. I'd like you to then pause the video and have a go yourself. See if you can get the answer, and then I'll release the answer. So the question is, can you rationalize the denominator of five over four minus root three? Okay, so pause the video now, have a go at that. Rationalize the denominator. Leave your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so what you do, hopefully, and what you've done, hopefully, is multiply the top and the bottom by four plus root three. The top, the numerator becomes 20 plus 5 root 3. The denominator becomes 4 times 4 is 16. Minus root 3 times 4 is minus 4 root 3. Plus root 3 times 4 is plus 4 root 3. Those will cancel each other out and make 0. And then negative root 3 times root 3 is negative 3. And so that then simplifies to 20 plus 5 root 3 all over 13. And that's the simplest form of the answer. Sometimes they ask you to write your answer in the form of um, a plus b root 3, where um, a and b are rational numbers. And in that case, if, you, they want them to, if they want it to be separate, you would write it as 20 thirteenths plus 5 thirteenths lots of root 3. That is an equivalent version of that. Okay, but I think it's more elegant to write it as 20 plus 5 root 3 over 13. Well done if you got that answer. What you should go away and do now is you should have a go at exercise 1.2 from the textbook I've already mentioned. Okay, have a look specifically at questions 9 onwards. But you should also make sure you understand the rest of the exercise, okay, and make sure you are fluent playing and working and enjoying using thirds, okay? Off you go. Practice. Enjoy.